Good evening. My name is Autumn Fox, and today I will be ex exploring the author study of Chris Van Allsburg for EL320 at Athens State University for the summer semester of 2020. Uh, as I said, my name is Autumn Fox. I am a Sneed State graduate. Uh, I graduated in the spring of 2019. I'm currently 20 years old. I will turn 21 next January. I'm a current student at Athens State University and I'm majoring in elementary education. I am projecting to graduate in the spring of 2021 and I will be furthering my education in order to obtain my master's degree at either Athens State University or at Jacksonville State University. Growing up as Chris Van Allsburg, he was born on June 18, 1949 to the parents of Dol Doris Christine Van Allsburg and Richard Van Allsburg. Uh, he was born at Grand Rapids, Michigan. He has an older sister named Karen that was born in 1947. The Allsburgs lived in a small house beside a creamery that his father ran. That creamery was actually a family-run business. Um, his father and his brothers also worked there. Um, what happened was there were actually delivery trucks that were yellow and blue. And Chris Allsburg has a book that speaks of yellow and blue and it can actually some people say that it is linked to that creamery when Osberg was three years old they moved to the edge of grand rapids uh, fun fact when chris was at the edge of grand rapids he had two siamese cats named fafner and eloise Osberg attended brenton's down school until sixth grade the Osbergs moved again to east grand rapids after chris's sixth grade year Chris attended high school in East Grand Rapids and he was interested in math and science. Chris attended college at the University of Michigan and decided that instead of math and science, he wanted to major in sculpture. He graduated the University of Michigan in 1972 and went to Rhode Island School of Design for graduate school. Chris Van Allsburg's Career Milestones after earning his master's degree in sculpting, he opened his own sculpture studio in Providence, Rhode Island. He then married Lisa Morrison in 1975. Um, they met, actually, at the College of University of Michigan. Uh, Lisa majored in art and in education, and she became an elementary art teacher in Providence. The first time Osberg displayed his sculptures was in 1977 in New York City. He began drawing images, and everyone thought his drawings were great. And a fun fact is that Osberg did not think his drawings were important, um, much to the demise of what everyone else thought. He began drawing. Uh, Alan Stone showed two of Chris's drawings to a curator, and they were both placed in the Whitney Museum of Art in 1978. Lisa used picture books in her elementary classroom, uh, she actually taught third grade at the time, and she encouraged Chris to create his own books and illustrations. Walter Lorraine, uh, a co-founder of Hofton Milfen Company in Boston, received some of Chris's drawings from Lisa's illustrator friend, David McCauley. David is the person that pushed Lisa to push her husband to become an author and an illustrator because he saw potential in his drawings also and realized that he could really gain children's attentions with his drawings. Uh, Lorraine, Lorraine encouraged Chris to write his own book and illustrate it uh, after he saw his work that Macaulay had shown him. Chris decided to give it a try and this is when The Garden of Abdul Ghazi was created and it was published in 1979. After the first book, he had since written and illustrated 19 books, and he also helped write and illustrate three other books written by Mark Helprin. And a fun fact is that Chris and Lisa have two daughters named Sophia and Anna. Uh, three of Osberg's most famous books. Um, the first book that he has ever that he ever wrote and illustrated was The Garden of Abdul Ghazi. 
It is about a young boy named Alan that is having to watch Miss Hester's dog Fritz. Fritz is full of mischief, and when Alan takes Fritz for a walk, he breaks free and goes into a magician's garden that dogs are not supposed to be in. Alan asks the magician, Gauzy, where Fritz is, and he says that he turned him into a duck. Alan takes the duck that is Fritz home, and on the way, the duck flies away with Alan's hat. When Alan gets back to Miss Hester's house, Fritz is there as a dog and has Alan's hat. This book allows children to be able to determine at the very end of the book if Fritz was really turned into a duck and was turned back, or if Gauzy was just trying to play a prank on him. Um, fun fact, you can find the dog Fritz in all of Osberg's books somewhere. Uh, in the book, in his book Jumanji that we'll speak of here in just a few minutes, uh, Fritz is actually a toy in that book and you can see him in the background of uh, some illustrations throughout the book. Um, next we have The Polar Express. This book has become a traditional Christmas book for children. This book is about a young boy who is laying in bed listening for Santa's bells on Christmas Eve because his friend says that Santa does not exist. He hears a loud sound, and it is a train outside his house. It stops, and he realizes he has a ticket in his house coat for the train and boards. The train is full of toy of boys and girls and is headed to the North Pole. There, the boy receives the first gift of Christmas from Santa, a reindeer bell. The boy can hear it ring because he believes, and under the tree the next morning, on Christmas morning, there was the present with the bell. He and his sister can hear it, but his parents cannot because they do not believe. And as adults, uh, he and his sister can also hear it because they still believe. Um, lastly, we have Jumanji. This story is about two children named Peter and, and Judy. They find a board game at the park when their parents leave them at home to go to an opera. While Judy is reading the directions, it states that once you start the game, you must finish the game. They begin playing, and each time they roll the die, a new creature emerges into the house. Eventually, there is a lion, monkeys, and other crazy events happening inside the house. Finally, Judy is at the end of the game, and the game is finished, so the house goes back to normal. They take the game back to where they found it. They watch as two kids, Danny and Walter Budwing, grab the game to play, but they never read directions. So this book is also like the Garden of Abdul Ghazi. It leaves children wondering at the end of the story whether what happens to the two boys, Danny and Walter, once they are uh, playing the game. And a fun fact that five of Osberg's books are motion films. Uh, Chris Osberg's awards and accomplishments, as you can see on this slide, he has numerous, numerous awards and accomplishments that he has um, made throughout the years. But a few that I want to highlight on are that in 1980, uh, he won the Caldecott Honor Book Citation from the American Library Association for the Garden of Abdul Ghazi, which was just one year after he published the book. He also won a Boston Globehorn Book Award for the illustration for the Garden of Abdul Ghazi. In 1982, he won the Caldecott Medal for Jumanji. Uh, also won the Boston Globehorn Book Award for illustration for Jumanji. Uh, won the Children's Choice for, from the International Reading Association for Jumanji and the American Book Award for illustration from the Association of American Publishers for Jumanji. Um, if we go down just a tad bit, in 1986, he won the Caldecott Medal for the Polar Express won the Boston Globehorn Book Award for illustration for the Polar Express. And then in 2004, the Polar Express was made into a major motion picture starring Tom Hanks. Uh, Jumanji is also a major uh, motion picture uh, that uh, starred the late Robin Williams. Uh, and then it has since been redone by Dwayne um, Johnson and Nick Jonas and others. Uh, and they recently just come out with a second one, and I believe that there, um, and there's even a third one coming. And then uh, a fun fact, every book Osberg received a Caldecott Honor or Caldecott Medal for, he also won the Boston Global Horn. 
Allsberg is a wonderful author and illustrator that originally started as a sculptor. As his interest for drawing grew, his wife and, and her friend encouraged him to draw images geared towards children. Lisa's friend showed Allsberg's drawings to his boss, and he was ready to work with Allsberg on children's books because he saw potential. Allsberg has been writing ever since and has won numerous medals and honors. Five movies have been made that are in honor of his books. His books have turned into children's classics, and Allsberg will have an enormous legacy left behind once he passes. And here are the resources that I used in order to create this presentation. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this, this author presentation, and I hope that you will go read a few of Chris Allsberg's books and enjoy them for yourself, or read them with your children, or your students in your classroom, or just anyone, uh, because they they have wonderful wonderful um, illustrations and storylines thank you for listening <laughs>